Hi, my name is Songbo, and welcome to Opus Magnum. So if you've clicked this video, you're looking for some tips and tricks on how to get the lowest cost solutions for Opus Magnum. Uh, before we go into that, there is a link in the description. Uh, this video will be the first one of this playlist, but the playlist has all of the puzzles, uh, all the main campaign, the appendix, and all six journal entries for the lowest cost solutions that I have come up with. Uh, feel free to take a look at that if you want to check your solutions. Um, if you don't want any spoilers, you can just read the description of the video and say, oh, he did it with 60 gold. Okay, let's see if we can match or beat that. Uh, most of the time, I, I doubt you'll be able to beat it. Um, in fact, for most of them, you shouldn't be able to beat it. If you do end up beating any of them, post a comment, say, hey, I got this, and maybe include a GIF of, of the solution he came up with, and then I can try to beat it and then compare um, at the end. And I will give you credit in the re-upload of that video for pointing out uh, that I didn't do as good as I thought I did. Uh, but anyway, so for tips and tricks on how to get lowest cost, uh, the first thing you should be aware of is that these histograms uh, aren't really that good. Um, it's really hard to gauge where you are on the histogram, even if you're on this lowest bar. Um, each of these ticks is, um, in this case, uh, one, two, three, four, each of these ticks is worth 25. And the way the histograms work is the tick is, so if this one's, if you're in this bar, if there was a bar here, you'd be in 100 or less um, all the way down to uh, 80. So this range would be 80 to 100. Uh, the next one being 75, uh, 80, 80 to 100, um, 105 to 125, 130 to 150, and so on and so forth. So it is quite a, a large range, and this can get even higher to where each take is worth 50 or even 100 in some cases. So the histograms are not a very good measure right now. I'm hoping that at some point they update the game to show the high score in like this friends list area here to say high score with the lowest score possible. The set, second thing to note about lowest cost is that it is almost always mutually exclusive with cycles and instructions. So when you're looking at the high scores here, if you were to come up with three different solutions, one for lowest cost, one for lowest cycles, and one for lowest instructions, or in some of the other ones, lowest area, um, and you get the lowest in all of them, your high score will be shown as you got solutions for all three. Um, this is not actually a good example of that, but if you have, if you hover over a single puzzle, it'll show you, okay, well, this puzzle is here, here, and here. Um, Whereas if you don't uh, mouse over anything, your histograms will show with your lowest solutions that you've come up with across the board. Um, and when I mean mutually exclusive, I mean if you're pursuing lowest cost, that means that one, typically one arm or very few arms are doing a lot of manipulation, a lot of work on their own. There isn't a whole lot of synergy going on. So lowest cost tends to uh, be inversely related to cycles. Lowest cost sometimes correlates with lowest um, area um, and instructions is it's kind of a wash cycles lowest uh, lowest cycles is often correlated with high you know uh, really really high cost because you have a lot of things trying to work together to get it done as quickly as possible and an area and instructions are kind of a balance of both worlds um, so anyways um that's it for understanding the histograms and figuring out your ranking. The next thing, uh, we're gonna go into individual pieces and sort of try uh, try to explain sort of just general ideas of how to apply them. So the first thing is number of arms. Um, typically, most solutions can be done with a single arm. And uh, I would say about two thirds of them or 80% of them can be done with a single fixed length arm, meaning it's not a piston. You know, this one that can extend and do all that on the fly, whereas this fixed arm can only rotate and grab and that sort of thing. Um, now what you need to do, because you have a, a single fixed arm and most of the time it's gonna be kind of close like this, you've gotta figure out how to jam pack all of the items that you need in the six spaces around you. And so you have to get kind of creative and we'll go into some of those details later, but you need to somehow figure out how to get all of the pieces needed to make the molecules in and around your, um, your arm right here. So let's say a solution can't be done with a single arm, just sitting and stationary like this. 
then you're going to start pursuing additional arms as well as using track. Uh, one thing to know, and you, you've probably noticed this by now, two regular fixed arms is the cost of one piston arm, and one piston arm is worth one fixed arm with up to four track, which means if you can do a solution with a piston arm, and you can do the same solution with three or two track, you'll save five and 10 gold respectively, because each piece of track is worth five. So try pursuing track-based solutions before pursuing piston-based solutions. Um, if you can't figure out how to do a piston, or uh, if you can't figure out how to do a track-based solution, then piston may be the, the correct and cheapest solution. There are some cases where a piston is the cheapest and even some solutions where piston on a track might be the, the least expensive solution. One other thing about arms, I have, in, in all the cheap solutions, I have never used this arm, I have never used this arm, and I have never used that arm. Everything can be done with a single arm and it is cheaper to do so. These are just more efficient things for um, doing cycles quickly or doing a uh, lower amount of cycles. That's pretty much all they're useful for. They're not very useful for lowest cost solutions. Um, another thing that you probably figured out by now, when it comes to binding things together, you want to use a single binder. It costs one third the cost of the triple binder. This triple binder is really only useful for um, lowering, lowering cycles with a lot of things working together and trying to get a ton of bonds right away or really, really quickly. Uh, all the solutions can be done with a single binder up to journal six so far. That's what I've done um, So yeah um, When it comes to creative solutions You can do this fire with a single arm a single fixed arm and You might be wondering well, how do you get these two other bonds and well the answer is you just rotate them out so just kind of example here you get your first bond there you pivot it out, you let go, you re-grab it, and you pivot it. And yeah, there you go. So this can be done with a single arm. Um, another thing to note is the Van Burla wheel does not necessarily need to be anywhere close to your arm. Um, and in addition, you can use bound molecules together to reach a Van Burla arm if it's far away. All you gotta do is get whatever atom you want, or um, yeah, get whatever salt atom you need to change onto this little platform. And that can be here, it can be here. I mean, however far you can get your burla wheel away. If it's out of the way, then you can swing molecules around and that sort of thing. Um, uh, another thing to look out for is what I, what I call distant transformations. So normally you, you might set this up like this where you want to put the lead or whatever um, upgrading atom you're going to be doing sticking here. But there are some cases when you have limited space around you. Let's say you've got your, your end molecule here and you got a couple other things and you just can't have this part here. That's fine. The only one you need to have next to your arm or within reach of your arm is the Quicksilver so that you can dump your Quicksilver in. This one, or uh, you know the this upgrading pad, you can have at a distance and still upgrade it. And it can upgrade it when attached to another molecule. So again, keep that in mind. That is a way to clear up one of the spaces near you if you need it. Um, because again, your, your space is limited. One other thing to note about uh, distant transmutation or distant transformation is that uh, salt is also another good one as is the Van Burla wheel as we demonstrated up here. Um, if you got like a big molecule and you know that you need a, a, a specific spot turned into salt, you could pass the molecule over the salt and change that piece that you need to it. You don't necessarily have to have this next to your thing and you don't necessarily have to change it before attaching it to whatever you want. You can make your atom, swing it over the glyph of calcification and turn it to salt. Now onto these guys here. Uh, so we got, I forgot what they're called. Glyph of purification, pu purification, purification, and the glyph of animismus. So, glyph of purification is similar to the quicksilver thing, except for upgrading um, two of the same atom to the next one. And this one is to create uh, vitae and mores from salt. Now, the if you see one of these in your, in your um, requirements, I I tend to cheer because that means at the the cheapest cost solution involves an arm 
that's extended, you know, a fixed arm that's extended, and three track. Now, uh, if, if you've not used fixed arms before and you're going, or if you've not used fixed arms yet, know that the, uh, the molecule whipping and rotating and that sort of thing is kind of tricky because, um, let's say if you're going from here to here, if there's anything in these two slots, it will crash into them. Now, these inner two are fine if it's just a single atom. It can pass over inner atoms just fine, but outer ones, you gotta be wary of these two spots because if there's anything there like the wall or like a Van Burlo wheel, you'll crash into it. So um, you gotta be a little tricky with that. One option you can do if, if you need to get it here is to move it down and then rotate it up and get it up there. That's just, again, one, one technique you can do to get it there. But anyways, uh, so with these, Again, the minimum solution you you can do with them is three track and one fixed arm the next best or next cheapest solution would be a piston arm and one piece of track because this one of ours of course can extend out and do that uh, but you know the difference is 525 between these two this one costs 25 more than that and you really only want to use a piston arm instead of this when you can't do this whipping around of the extended arm and again, the, you know, the movement of the atoms and the molecules gets really kind of, it, it's funky and you just got to practice and get used to it. Uh, what is this called again? Uh, the Glyph of Animismus. It's a similar thing. Um, you use an extended arm to reach all four spots there. So that's the minimum and lowest cost you can do with that. The next best is again, a piston with uh, a track here because this will reach all of them. I forgot to mention that it doesn't have to take this shape. Uh, in the case of this one, you can have a little elongated shape like this. This one, this little uh, diamond can be in a different shape like, or a different rotation like that, or a different shape overall. And there might be some benefits to using different shapes other than this. Um, in addition with this one in particular, you can also, where did I go with this? You can, oops, do what I want, please. Ah, hold on you can make a zigzag pattern. And again, there are some cases where being able to move translationally along this path is more beneficial than being only able to go around the track. And again, use it as your, at your discretion. So when you see a solution that has both, while the mi limiting factor is this one with four track, which will also work for this one with three track. And again, it, it's, it's it's sort of a godsend and I, I cheer every time I see one of these because I know that I can get a lot of movement out of this. And then you combine that with a, 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 uh, a binder and you can get this translation of movement along with pivoting and stuff and you can do a lot of molecule building with track. And being forced to have one of these means that you, you're free to do a lot more than you could with just, um, just a regular arm over here. So that's, that's really good. The new one that uh, got added in journal entry five is the, uh, the what is this called again? Quintessence, duh, okay. So quintessence, the cheapest way to make quintessence, this is from the four base elements into a quintessence, is an, ex an extended arm and three pieces of track. Now you might be saying, well, if this one's four, this one's got one extra space, why is it only three? Well, the answer is this spot can reach these two, this spot can reach these two, and this spot can reach the middle for the quintessence. The next, so, so this is 20 plus 15, so that's, 35. The next best solution is this one with two arms and this costs 20. Now the trick with this one is one of these is going to have access to the elements that it's needing and mo most likely the other one is going to be getting the, the quintessence out. Now what you need to do with this one is use the central place here as a way to pass off two of the elements so that this one can put them in place. And that's just the trick with that. Uh, the next best solution is with a piston and uh, two track. This is 10 more than this one. So this is a 50 cost solution, 40 for the piston arm and 10 for the track. And with the track here, so much last time, this one can reach both of those. This can reach that. And then all three can be reached from here. Uh, moving on to the other side where you take a quintessence and you turn it into the different elements. This one requires four, at least as far as I can tell. 
it's basically the same layout as um, this one up here, if it's sh if it's um, space like that. But similar to this one up here, when you are, um, which one is the redundant one? Uh, this one's redundant. So when you're reaching this one, which would be like there, this one can also reach here. So four track is the minimum for reaching all of those. Uh, you can do it with five track if you need to have some extra movement or some different pattern of uh, track in here. Uh, so five, so again, for five more, you can get that. It's, it's fine, there's no reason you can't do that. And the reason I say that is because this is still less than doing it the piston route. The piston route, again, is 50. This one is 45, this one is 40. So you want to, if, if you can do it with this over a piston, you want to do that. Again, it's lower cost, that's what we're going for. The, the last thing uh, of note that I, I, I've thought of for tips and tricks of this is make sure the things you're using are actually required. And a good example is this glyph of calcification. There's some times when you get an atom like this and you need to split it apart and you're thinking, well, I'll have, a I'll have an extra one of these pieces so I need to you know, convert it to salt or I need to grab one of these glyphs of duplications and change this salt into a blue. However, if they give you one of these, I don't know what they're called, glyph of disposal. If they give you a glyph of disposal and you can conveniently use it somewhere, use it instead of these two. And the reason is this thing is free. It costs zero. This glyph of cal duplication costs 20 and the calcification costs 10. So if you need a blue, for and if you need a lot of blues for the molecule you're making and you don't need the salt don't bother with the glyph of duplication just dump the salt vice versa if you need the salt but they give you this blue don't get a glyph of calcification dump it in the glyph of disposal you know just a little uh, demonstration of that just dump it in the glyph of disposal you can grab your blues and you can do that over and over again then you won't have any extra atoms um i think that is about it all right, that is it for my tips and tricks to get lowest cost solution. There are some other puzzle specific ones, but if I go into detail too much about them as far as strategies goes, it sort of spoils the that specific puzzle. And then basically, because I, I basically have to tell you what to do. And at that point, you're just copying my solution. So um, those are just some general tips that will apply to multiple puzzles, not just you know a specific one. So yeah, if you found this video useful, please give it a like, and if you're new around here, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to check out the lowest cost solutions in the playlist linked below.